Namaste. Today we are going to discuss how to practice spiritual discipline. This is also given in the Bhagavad Gita. Many times we feel drawn towards one particular kind of discipline or spiritual practice. So which is the most efficacious? Actually speaking, there are a lot of doubts on this. Which one should we adopt? Uh, and which one will really work for us? Because each person has a different requirement. But there are many standardized spiritual disciplines which we can adopt in order to reach the spiritual goal of life. So today, let us see what the Bhagavad Gita says about this. This question was also put by Arjun. That which is the most efficacious form of worship? Is it the Nirgun worship or the Sagun worship, which means do we worship God without attributes or do we worship Him with attributes? Now, the answer given by Lord Krishna is very simple. He says that for the embodied soul, it is best to adopt the Sakar worship, which means you worship God with form, with attributes, so that you are able to relate with Him. Because you consider yourself to be an embodied being, you can conceive of God only like that, as a bigger, as a higher being. So, this is a kind of a psychological law that how you look upon yourself, your concept of reality uh, of the ultimate also will be like that. So, as long as we are trapped in this body-mind complex, as long as we are embodied souls, this form of worship, the Sakar uh, worship, the Sagun worship, Work, works miraculously. So, you see, Lord Krishna's answer to Arjun's question uh, is, let me just quote the uh, exact uh, shloka from the Bhagavad Gita. It comes in chapter 12. He says, Maya Veshya Mano Yemam Nitya Yukta Upasate Shraddhaya Parayopeta Steme Yukta Tamamataha Now, he says, one who Maya Veshya Mano Yemam, one who keeps his mind in me, which means he is he keeps me in his memory, he keeps me in his smriti, smaran manan are such important disciplines. One who keeps the Lord in his mind, Nitya Yukta Upasate, and thus he keeps in touch with me, the Lord says. The sadhak is in touch with me all the time. One who worships me like this, Shraddhaya with a lot of faith and devotion. Parayo petaste te me yukta tamamataha. And in, in constant contact with my being, one who is like this, he I, I deem as the highest worshipper. He is the best worshipper. Now, if you actually see deeply into this shloka, the Lord himself is telling us, relate to me as I am. As a, he comes to us as an incarnation, we consider Sri Ram, Sh Krishna, uh, Sri Ram Krishna. All of them are in incarnations. What does it mean? It means they are they have come in a human form, but their consciousness is the consciousness of God. So when we dwell upon this Sakar Murti, this particular form with a name, with attributes, with a form then we are able to relate with that ultimate reality in a very beautiful way in a direct way. It becomes relatable. So, this is what the Lord Himself is saying. I consider them to be my best worshippers who are ever devoted to me and who, who are Nitya Yuktas, who are sort of connected to my deepest self while worshipping my form, my while worshipping my name. In this way, they are connected to me. So, this is a very important shloka which will help us in our sadhana. Many people feel, why should we worship a form? Why should we worship a human being? But you do not know the, the psychology of your own mind. As long as you consider yourself to be human, you can only worship a higher human being. And that is why the Lord comes as an incarnation. The Supreme comes in a human form. In fact, the form of the incarnation is nothing but the highest representation of the ultimate, 
which we can't conceive of just now in our mind but through this kind of worship gradually we can enter into the consciousness of god that is why in hinduism if you see a whole lot of things are worshiped not that the thing is being worshiped in itself it is because the lord manifests through all this that is why you have worship of trees you have worship of stones you have worship of a whole lot of symbols of idols for this reason that it should become graspable to the mind and then the mind will get attached to it that is why this form of worship so if we catch this idea properly we will find it is a very efficacious form of worship nobody is worshiping a stone for its own sake or a tree for its own sake it is being worshiped as a symbol of the highest and the highest will manifest through that that is why it is being worshiped so if we have these ideas clear we will make our own spiritual practice better and better more efficacious more practical more realistic to our lives and we can move forward then the lord further says uh, shri krishna further says why nirakar upasana is difficult for the embodied he says ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matparaha ananye naiva yogena maam dhyayanta upasate tesha maham samuddharta mrityu samsara sagarad bhavami na chirat partha maya veshita chetasam he says the uh, actually Uh, the background to this particular shloka is for the embodied worship of the impersonal absolute is difficult because he has a solid sense of identity the identity should get connected with god in order to transcend the identity one requires to enter the consciousness of god that is why sakar worship is efficacious further the lord is telling one who ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya one who dedicates all his actions to me you see the the renunciation of action means dedicating the fruit of action to the lord and one who is mat paraha one who is immersed in my consciousness ananye naiva yogena maam dhyayantu upasate with ananya chitta with an undistracted mind one whose mind dwells in me such a one is what do i do to him tesha maham samuddhartam mrityu samsara sagarad i redeem him i liberate him from this ephemeral world from this transient world uh, i lift him from that uh, this world if you can, if you see it for what it is it is impermanent and it is given to death it will cease to be one day so i lift him above that bhavami na chirat partha maya veshita chetasam one whose mind is in me quickly that person gets this redemption i my grace lifts him from this mere ephemeral state of existence into pure god consciousness so this is the promise of the lord and you see he is also giving us the sequence what is better than what this is also very clear in one of the uh, shlokas in the same chapter chapter 12 shreyo hi gnanam abhyasat gnanat dhyanam vishishyate dhyanat karma phala tyaga tyaga shantir anantaram which means from the mere mechanical practice of something like say a ritual he lord krishna says it is better to do it uh, it is better to have knowledge rather than do something just mechanically it is pretty obvious then he says but better than having just mere an knowledge of something is meditation on that thing because you know meditation is not mere ideation it is something more than that we have discussed a lot of meditation in the past so it should be clear to you any form of deep knowledge requires meditation and you become one with the object of knowledge in meditation that gives you a complete knowledge of the object so this is what he is saying better than mere mechanical practice is knowledge better than this knowledge which is still objective is meditation but better than meditation he says is karma phala tyaga because tyaga shantir anantaram it it is better to give up the fruit of action it is superior to even dhyan he says because it immediately brings supreme peace into your heart 
See, why is this consistently uh, focused upon in the Bhagavad Gita? The sheer efficacy and superiority of selfless action. Because, you know, that purifies the mind like nothing else. It is superior even to dhyan, he says. When you give up the fruit of your action, dedicate the action entirely to the Lord, naturally it will liberate you. Immediately great peace will enter your heart. Uh, Sri Ramakrishna used to give this famous uh, example, you know, of um, if, if there is desire in a person's mind, he will be chased by a whole lot of desires. I mean, a, a whole lot of all kinds of emotions. All kinds of people. But when he lets go of desire, hmm, then immediately he gets peace. Sri Ramakrishna used to give the example of a kite carrying a piece of meat in his uh, uh, beak. So he is, uh, you know, he is pursued by a number of crows who want that same piece. Immediately as soon as he realizes this, he lets go of the piece of meat and immediately all this noise around him stops. So this is the point we are trying to, the Lord is trying to make that the renunciation of the fruit of action immediately puts the person far above the trammels of the ordinary life. The mind is able to connect deeply with the source and this is so very important. That is why it is considered far above mere mechanical practice of something or just knowledge, superficial knowledge of it or a meditation on it. It is far better to give up the fruit of whatever action you perform at the feet of the Lord so that your mind naturally lifts to its pristine state. So, this uh, kind of uh, understanding we get from the Bhagavad Gita, it is such a comprehensive understanding of spiritual disciplines. Please see. I remember one uh, story from the life of the Buddha. It is said that um, there was one uh, professor who came to Buddha, a man of great learning, and he said that he had a lot of doubts in his mind. And the Buddha said, uh, well, I cannot clear your doubts. Your doubts can only be cleared if you live with me, if you stay with me. How long? Two years. So the man stayed. And for two years, he experienced the deep peacefulness of the Buddha, the stillness of the Buddha and the utterly selfless actions of his life. And towards the end of that two years, that, that learned professor came to the Buddha and said, Sir, I have no more doubts in my mind. The very instrument which would ask questions has dissolved. This is the only way real spiritual queries can be answered. They are not solved, they are dissolved because your mind will not solve something remaining in the same state as the question. It has to go above that. Once it goes above that, the question itself dissolves. So it is being and becoming. And that is why you see this, the knowledge which the Bhagavad Gita is giving us is very, very powerful and practical for our spiritual practices. The more we dwell on the Bhagavad Gita, the better will our spiritual practice become. And this is, this can only be known by a sadhak, by one who practices. So this is Bhagavad Gita on spiritual practice. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.